David Balson, battle tested, gonna come to you tonight and pretty much come to the conclusion of my story, talk about the final end, um, my head accident. Uh, you should know that this is 30 years of time that has elapsed. Um, there was a lot of, a lot, a lot happened in between there. Um, not anything that's necessarily adds or takes away from the story, so I didn't go into every minute detail of those those years that passed. Like I said, a lot of uh, um, being self-destructive, a lot of uh, once I get past suicidal. Um, th- let me clarify, too, that having gone through that and been there and being on this side, I would never talk suicide again. Um, I am so glad to be alive. There's so much in this world that I would have missed that life is so valuable. And I think uh, I treasure more having been there, been that close to wanting to end things that I see the work, life is amazing. My two most terrible worst day ever could have been yesterday with my mom. Could have been that. I would not have given that up for anything. Uh, one of the other things I should tell you too that um, I would never wish what I went through on anybody ever. Not my worst enemy. But I thank God every day that I did go through it personally. The, the growth and what I got out of that, the learning and stuff, I couldn't have learned it any other way. Honestly, I, I truly believe that God knew that he needed to take me this, through this path, through that trail to bring me to a place where I'm at. I'm really like the person I am right now. Um, I, it's all about the journey. I'm not where I want to be, but I've learned that I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to learn from every mistake and make it better and become always searching to be a better person. Okay, um, I'm going to talk this night about the healing, what brought about the true transition, the true change in my life. To do this, I'm going to probably allow myself to go somewhere emotionally that's very difficult for me to go. This is, um, it was, for, for you to understand, i got to allow myself to open those wounds. And that too, this is all part of the healing. To do this, you don't understand how cathartic this is for me, how therapeutic it is for me to, to talk about these things openly. Every time I talk about it, it becomes, it's not easier, but it, the healing becomes better. I grow more all every time. Um, like I've said, the guy that actually uh, hit me on the head that actually had the lug wrench is James Duty. He and I are personal friends. I actually reached out to him today through text. I haven't heard back. Hopefully that says I still have his number. We'll find out. I will have a way to get a, in touch with him and use your friends. Um, so I'm going to throw the sledge around again. It helps me kind of keep me distracted. Uh, I need to do it anyway. But I'm not going to throw it as hard because I'm going to try to concentrate on the things I'm saying. We, I had gone about, gosh, had to be 25 years. And you feel, you think you're better. You think everything's okay. That's, you just do. You just, everything's buried, whatever. You don't have to dig it up. You don't have to think about it. Um, through a mutual friend, somebody that attended my dad's church, uh, James was trying to reach out to me. James wanted to get in touch with me and talk to me. And I would not have it. There's no way. Was, I, I buried those things. I'm done. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna open up for your sake. I'm not gonna. So you can get healed. So you can feel better about yourself. I'm not gonna open those wounds. Forget it. So I waited. Um, probably ten years, maybe more. But all the time, I was telling a girlfriend about everything that was going on, and she kind of knows my story. And she made me. I had to make her a promise that I would reach out to James and see what he had to say. So, I did. I had my friend reach out to him, give him my number, and he called me. Uh, the first time he called me, I was coming home from work. And uh, I told you, I was gonna, I'm going to allow myself to go there so you understand. He uh, we talked. It was a conversation. Talked about, you know, getting together, maybe going somewhere and getting a bite to eat. And um, talk about things. Uh, when I got off the phone, I broke down hysterically. I was driving home. I had to pull up to the side of the road. Broke down hysterically. Cried. Bawled for probably 10 minutes. Just uncontrollable. 
uncontrollably. I didn't realize how much I'd had pent up, how much I kept inside. Um, I got home and talked to my older brother, Mike, who was with me the whole time. I haven't really talked much about him, but he was with me the whole thing. Um, told me that I was going to go see James. We are going to get in and out burr, have a burr, get a bite to eat. He's like, oh, man, that's great. That's awesome. Good for you. Good for you. I said, I want you to go with me. And his demeanor changed. He was like, wow, okay, all right. Um, talked about it. Okay, he's going to go with me. No big deal. Came to me a day later, and he goes, wow, he goes, David. He goes, I didn't realize how much I was caring, how much anger, hostility, and things until you came and talked about this and asked me to go with you. He goes, I, he goes, he goes, I can't imagine. Whoosh. Because I can't imagine what you carry, what you carry for all these years. I, I can't, I can't imagine. He goes, I know what it was for me. He goes, when you asked me to come, he goes, I'm really glad for you. I'm glad. I think you need to do this. But when you asked me to go, so the wolf fell out beneath my feet. He goes, I was, he goes, I, he goes, I don't know. He goes, I don't, he goes, I, I, I don't know what you dealt with all these years. I said, yeah. I said, that's why I want you there. Pouring inside. So that's why I just wanted you there. So, uh, I, uh, Proceeded to call James again, call him another time. Always the same output, always with me just breaking down hysterically. Um, I can't tell you why. I can't tell you if it was anger or what. I can't tell you. All I know is that when I got a phone, I would, the emotions, the things that I kept inside that I buried were overwhelming. Um, the last phone call I made before we actually met, I was with my mother and my girlfriend at the time, uh, the one that I made the commitment to. Um, and we were in a grocery store. We were in Albertsons. And I got a phone. I said, uh, I'm pretty sure my daughter was with us too. I said, you guys got to go. in your car. And I got to go by myself. And they all saw it. They saw it in my eyes. Um, I would get a, uh, I call it going dark. I would just, I don't know how else to explain it. It just a black. It would just, everything would go black. Um, again, broke down. Yeah. Broke down. Quite a story in the car for a while. Went home. Um, went, made the plans. I'm going to go meet James at in that burger. Uh, we got there, and it, man, I can't even tell you the emotions that it was so overwhelming. I, I, I sat, and it's funny because Mike told me later because I saw it in your eyes, man. He was, I saw it. it was, all I could do was just keep talking. I had to just keep talking and try to keep to, so you would be okay. Everybody knows this. I say it. If I would have had a knife, I would have killed him. If I had had a weapon, I'd have killed him out there. I'd have put a, I'd have put a fucking knife in his neck. I'd have fucking taken his life from him right there. He owed it to me. Because he had taken my life. And uh, I just sat. And somewhere in there, he said something. And I started talking. I can't remember what I said. I can't remember the conversation. I can't I can't remember. Well, we talked. We talked for a little bit. What it was is James had um, become an alcoholic. He was in Alcoholics Anonymous, and he was doing the 12 steps. And, you know, the part of the 12 steps is you ask for forgiveness. You've got to people ask for forgiveness and tell them the thing. And I was the last person. I was the last one that he had to reach out to. Um, I was the one that, that had avoided him for so long. Uh, called it a day. Um, got done. Went home. My mom, I remember my mom being really scared because she saw it. She saw, like I said, I was black. I was about as black as I'd been in a long time. I was completely different. In fact, I remember taking a picture of myself because it was, I hadn't seen myself like that in a long time. Um, I remember going to bed early, fell asleep. I 
don't know what I don't know what happened in that time. I don't know what happened in the time from when I fell asleep to when I woke up. It was only a couple hours. Only a couple hours because I woke up at like one or two in the morning, um, got up. Somewhere in between there, everything. <sighs> now this is good. This I'm, I'm not upset. Now this is these are good tears. Everything had been taken away. Everything in my forgiving him, in my forgiving, accepting his for his apology and forgiving him, everything was gone completely. I woke up, I was free. I was free of everything that I fought with all those years, thirty years of battling with that, struggling with that, things I didn't know. All that shit, all that shit was gone. By me telling him it's okay and I, I, I accept your apology and I forgive you. My, that forgiveness, it took away everything. I, I can't I can't express enough. It was, well, I didn't realize how much weight I'd be carrying. It was literally, I literally felt like I was off the, off the ground. I literally felt like I was walking an inch above the ground. So much has been gone. So much has been taken away from me. Simple as just saying I, I, I forgive you. That, we hold these things in. We hold these things in unnecessarily. We think we're, our anger is, is justified. We think we do. We deserve to be angry. We do. We deserve to be angry. But we also deserve to forgive. We need to be able to tell people it's okay. Or we accept our apology. We need to apologize to people. We need to tell people that we're wrong and we're sorry. Those things, we don't realize how far those things go and how much they mean to each other. I mean, I'll keep saying it. I'll say it all the time. We need each other. The camera stopped. Let me start it. Hold on. You do the boop. Boop. Um, that way they can line up. Um, sometimes when my does, my other camera does high depth, it, it shuts off after ten minutes in a while. But uh, I. I said it's it's we hold these things and I, I, I we're justified. Our anger is justified. You're you're justified in being angry. You're justified in being mad. But you're killing yourself by holding it in. You, you, we, it's us. James didn't know. He didn't know I was angry. It didn't affect him. It didn't affect him one way or another. It was killing me. It was taking my life from me. I was aging because of my anger. Everything I held against him. And for me to be able to say I, I accept his apology and forget him, it was, it was awesome because I, I called him the next day and I said, I told him. I told him what happened. And the fact that, so cool because what he gave back to me, he did take my life from me. What he gave it back to, I was able to live again. And it was cool because I, I called him and told him and, and I gave him, I gave him life. Like these things matter. These things matter. We hold on to them and they're so irrelevant. Anger is so stupid. So stupid. Get rid of that fucking anger. Apologize. Say you're sorry. Forgive people. Learn to accept. Accept people's apologies. Man, I, I can't tell you that I held on to that shit for 30 fucking years. 30 years I held on to it. I can't, it was gone in the night. It was gone in hours. I could have been rid of that Years ago, I could have, I, I tell people my life is, I, I'm 30 years behind everything because I didn't think I was going to live for 30 years. I could be 30 years ahead right now. Not to take anything away from my life. I like my life the way it is. But I could have been 30 years ahead. 30 years is not all that, that shit built up that I let sit and stew inside of me. Um, I, I, like I said, today, James and I are good friends. Um. I consider him a personal friend. Life is too short to be angry all the time. I have a great life. I have an amazing life. And James gave me that by telling me he was sorry. Um, awesome. All right. I think that's it. Uh, Dave Balson, battle tested. I don't even care about looking good naked right now. I'm in a good mood. I told you, for me to talk about this is really, you see the smile on my face, it's genuine. Genuinely happy right now. Genuinely happy. Life is so good. Life is so short. Take advantage of it. And I could, I, and I'll see, I get on that thing where I could just ramble for a long time. And I'm not. Gave a ball some battle tested. I'm out. Yeah, I look good naked. I'm out.
I'm in a glass house digging up stones Fossils of us that I should not throw I heard that people don't change, they grow some Taking good care of your dinosaur bones